Welcome to the Care Block at 518 St. Germain Street West. On a warm June day in 1887, Charles Kerr stepped off the train from the Twin Cities. He knew St. Cloud well. He had lived here for more than a dozen years and had served as the city's mayor before moving to St. Paul. There he was a successful lawyer and had just been elected president of the St. Paul City Council. Now he was ready to invest in his old hometown. Presented with a deadline to buy a prime lot on St. Germain Street, he called on old associates in St. Cloud for cash advances and closed the deal by 10 o'clock at night. He promised the public that he would build, quote, the handsomest building in St. Cloud, no expense being spared. Keir turned to a Twin Cities architectural firm to design his building, hiring two young, ambitious men who would later leave their mark on American architecture. James Knox Taylor and Cass Gilbert had formed a partnership two years earlier, but had already gained a sterling reputation throughout the Midwest. For the Cure Block, they designed a three-story building using red pressed brick and brownstone for trim. By the fall of 1887, the building was ready. Taylor and Gilbert remained partners for only a few more years. In 1895, Cass Gilbert was selected to design the new state capitol in St. Paul, bringing him to national attention. Over the course of his career, Gilbert completed the landmark Woolworth Building in New York City, as well as the state capitals of Arkansas and West Virginia. His last building was the U.S. Supreme Court Building in Washington, D.C. James Knox Taylor, who likely was the lead designer for the Cure Block, was appointed supervising architect of the Treasury in 1898. A strong advocate of classical design, Taylor left his mark on hundreds of new federal buildings across the country during his 15 years at that post. The Cure Block proved to be a prime location for downtown businesses on the main floor, while for most of its history, the Masonic Lodge had its rooms on the second floor. In 1927, Herbergers bought the building for their growing department store business. Although the building was the work of one of America's great architectural firms, in the 1960s it was deemed too old-fashioned, so the front was covered with sheet metal to make it appear modern. Fortunately, in recent years, the Masonic Lodge removed the metal facade so that we can once again enjoy one of Minnesota's finest 19th century commercial buildings.